Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp, more specifically the Windows Privilege Escalation section, where we've been taking a look at various uh, techniques and vectors that we can utilize to elevate our privileges on a Windows system. And of course, we've been doing this on the TryHackMe Room Windows Privesc version 1. We've already gone through various uh, techniques and uh, we are currently on our 10th task, which involves utilizing uh, you know, stored credentials on Windows, uh, in conjunction with the run as utility in order to execute a malicious executable with uh, with the privileges of another user. And that is facilitated through stored credentials, right? So let me just explain uh, what uh, what's happening here, right? So if you take a look at the documentation, you can see that there's a tool called CMD key, right? And then you have run as. So let's learn a little bit more about these tools because it's always good to understand what you're doing instead of blindly running commands. Okay, so one of the resources that I really recommend for any beginner if you're trying to learn more about Windows and not really just about exploitation, but you know more on the blue team side of things is the Microsoft Docs website or just the documentation website as it's known. And uh, you can learn a lot about Windows, you know, by taking a look at, you know, various releases of Windows and uh, the, you know, Windows commands, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, in this case, let's learn more about CMD key, right? So what is CMD key? Uh, firstly, CMD key applies to Windows Server and the versions are supported are from version or Windows Server 2022 all the way to uh, or all the way back to Windows Server 2012. And we know that the target system uh, for this particular room is running Windows Server 2016. So we know that this that this will work. Right, so what is CMD key used for? Well, it's used to create, list, and delete stored usernames and passwords or credentials. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, hold on, I don't think I've ever heard of CMD key. Well, there are two reasons for that. If you've never worked with Windows Server, then we pretty much will not be familiar with what CMD key is and why it's so useful. And secondly, uh, whatever you can access with CMD key, or whatever you can do with CMD key can be done through the credential manager on Windows. So I'll just take you through that right now. So I have access to the target via RDP as is required by this lab. And if I just search for it here, and I'll give the VM uh, a couple of seconds to load up here. Uh, so if I search for credential manager, this is essentially what CMD key is accessing or interacting with. So if we take a look at Windows credentials, you can see that we have uh, right over here, we have Windows credentials, certificate based credentials and generic credentials. What we're looking for is Windows credentials because we're trying to identify credentials for a privileged user that we can use to uh, in conjunction or in synthesis with the run as tool to execute a, an executable with the privileges of that uh, or of that said uh, elevated uh, you know, user. So in this case, we can see that the user admin uh, there are stored credentials for the user admin, and uh, the this is interactive logon, and it you know displays the password there, but not in clear text. So that is what CMD key is used for, and it'll provide you with the syntax here uh, that you can utilize. And of course, in this case, we're going to be listing out uh, you know stored credentials. The reason why we're utilizing CMD key is because from an attacker's perspective. It's very rare that you'll be, uh, you know, you'll be interacting with the system via RDP, regardless of whether RDP is enabled or not. You're pretty much going to have access either through a interpreter session or through a standard command shell. So CMD key is very, very useful in those scenarios. So what is run as, right? Because run as is really the magic uh, of this particular technique in that it allows you to run specific tools or programs with different permissions than the user's current logon provides. So you can essentially run programs or executables, portable executables uh, with saved credentials. As you can see here, we have the ability within the syntax here to specify saved credentials and uh, we can run it. We can run that executable with the privileges associated uh, to the, you know, to the users whose credentials have been stored locally. Uh, that's as easy as I can put it. Another awesome website or resource that I recommend checking out is called ss64.com. Uh, and you can learn more about Windows by taking a look at the NT section. Now, I already uh, I will be putting the links to these resources in the description section because I think it's very important that as a hacker or a penetration tester that you learn how to perform your own research and get an understanding of the tools that you're using instead of using them blindly. That being said, uh, I've talked quite a lot, but it's very important, right? So the first thing we need to do is list any safe credentials. That's, of course, going to be facilitated through the use of CMD key. 
right? So we'll head over into my uh, unprivileged interpreter session. So, you know, if I say this info, we can see that uh, it, the target is running Windows Server 2016, which is uh, one of the requirements. Uh, if I say get use ID, you can see that's uh, currently the unprivileged user user. And then, you know, I can say get privs just to confirm that this is unprivileged. There we are. SE change notify privilege uh, and just a few more here. Right. So let's open up a command shell or a command prompt session here. And we can list out the current uh, the current stored credentials. Right. So uh, we'll say CMD key and then list. Give it a couple of seconds. And as you can see, this is really all the information that we were able to identify through Credential Manager by RDP. So this is what we're interested in here. We're interested in an account or credentials related to an account that is privileged or at least that is part of the local administrators group on Windows. And of course, this admin account is not to be confused with the actual administrator account. It's very different. Uh, the only difference is that this admin account is just part of the local Windows administrators group. So just keep that in mind. All right. Now that that is done, we actually need to transfer over the malicious executable that we will uh, be executing with the privileges of the admin user. And in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be utilizing a meterpreter payload generated with MSF Venom. Uh, in order to obtain a privileged meterpreter session or a meterpreter session with the privileges of the admin user. So I've already generated a payload and I've called it shell.exe and it already has my options, uh, my IP address specified as well as the respective port uh, that I want to listen on. So make sure when, when you're actually generating the payload with MSF Venom that uh, you know your IP address is specified correctly and the port that you specify it does not conflict with your pre-existing sessions, uh, your unprivileged sessions, right? Um, and of course, I set up the handler.rc file in the previous video, so we can um, we can you know just launch the actual handler.rc uh, script, the the resource script there to set up the handler for us, and this will listen for a connection, uh, you know, from the actual interpreter payload when it's uploaded uh, and executed on the target. Right, so let me make sure that we don't have any conflicts here with the port. There we are, it's running without any issues. We now need to upload the actual uh, interpreter payload that I generated to the system. And I will be storing it under the temp directory, as I've always recommended. Do I have any files in here? No, I don't. So I can say upload and then, you know, home, Kali, uh, documents and this is stored under trihackme windows privesc and shell.exe all right so that's going to upload it and now what we can do is let's make sure it's currently there fantastic so i can open up a command prompt or a command shell and uh, making sure that everything is running there and uh, one thing I want to highlight that's very important is in some instances that the credentials for the admin user might not be saved. If they aren't, as it says here, run the batch script under privesc and uh, the privesc directory. The name of that batch script is savecred.bat and uh, you just need to run it and uh, that'll refresh the saved credentials because in some cases uh, the credentials might not be saved and you might be prompted to enter the admin password, right? So we can now say, you know, run as, and um, we can now utilize the run as utility, right? So I'll just open up my terminal here and we can say run as and uh, save cred. And the user is admin, right? Because that was the save credentials. And then we need to specify the directory or the path to the executable that we want to execute, which is under temp and shell.exe. Right, let's hit enter. There we are, it runs successfully. And if we take a look at the handler there, it's sending the stage and we should receive or obtain a interpreter session with privileges associated with the admin user. So, you know, get use ID, admin, get privs. There we are. Now this isn't anti-authority, uh, you know, system privileges. As I said, I'll be covering how we can utilize uh, an account that is part of the local administrators group to bypass UAC and consequently obtain anti anti authority system privileges, right? So really that's as simple as it is when it comes down to this technique. So that is pretty much complete. As I said, 
uh, whenever you're working with uh, an operating system like Windows, which is you know quite monolithic at this point, and there are multiple editions and you know versions and releases of Windows, it's very good to understand what these tools are, you know why they're important, uh, you know why they're used, and what they can be used to, what they can be uh, essentially what they can accomplish in regards to standard operation as well as how they can be exploited or used, uh, you know used in conjunction with each other to, in this case, elevate privileges, right? So that is done. Uh, the next room where, or rather the next task that we're going to be taking a look at is pertinent to Windows passwords and more specifically the SAM database file. Uh, SAM stands for the Security Account Manager. Now, the problem I have with this task here is it uh, is utilizing a technique that you really do not find or will really you, you rarely ever come across this uh, particular technique and that's because it actually involves uh, you know uh, the scenario is that there is a copy of the SAM database file taken which is again it's something that you just will never find on a properly secured Windows system and so again I'll go through this technique uh, there's no problem with that uh, but I want to utilize you know, real world tools, and I'm probably going to be utilizing Mimikatz as Mimikatz will pretty much, uh, you know, extract NTLM hashes uh, from the LSAS cache, the LSAS process cache, and the LSAS or local security uh, authority subsystem process is, you know, typically interacts with the SAM database as it's responsible for authentication. So the cache of that process will typically contain NTLM hashes. So again, you, we're really not, with Mimikatz, you're not touching the actual SAM database file. Uh, you're essentially working from within memory. So that's, I think that's much, uh, that's a much better technique there. But uh, I don't want to keep you guys here any longer. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. If you want to reach out to me personally, you can do so uh, via my Twitter. The link to that is in the description section. Uh, if you'd like to join our Discord server, the link to that uh, is in the, des the description section as well. And uh, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, uh, you can do so by taking a look at our Patreon. We really appreciate all your support. And I will be seeing you guys in the next video. Bye. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated and this is a formal thank you. So thank you Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated and you keep us making even more high quality content for you guys. So thank you.